Okay, listen. If you want to have a prosperous future, manifestation is so weak. Like, manifestation is so weak, and it's also demonic, okay? So let's talk about it. Listen, I know that this can get pretty controversial, and people are going to feel a certain type of way about this video, but listen, I have a responsibility first to Christ and second to anybody else, and since he has delivered me from the new age and being a white witch, I have no problem exposing the darkness. If you want to know more about that, then follow along, but for right now, let's get into it. We're going to get... I love this girl. She is just so on fire for God. Her experience of being in the new age and in witchcraft and then now being saved uh, is just so powerful. She has a lot of wisdom and a lot of insight. And talking today about manifestation, which is such a popular practice right now, even Christians are using manifestation in their uh, life. And uh, it's not it's actually not really good. Let's listen to her explain it. Why? To get straight to scripture here we're going to be in first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 and it says this now the spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons ephesians 5 11 says take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness but instead expose them manifestation is a demonic doctrine and it says in the bible that his people perished for lack of knowledge so here what we do on this page is we educate by exposing the darkness, taking glory away from Satan, we give it straight to Jesus Christ, the only one who can save you out of any of this. I hear Christians say this all the time, and they're like, well, I manifest with God. The Bible says that fresh and salt water can't flow out of the same spring. The Bible says that you can't serve two masters. You have to pick one. Manifestation and God do not go together. They don't. I love that she's bringing this point up because there are a lot of Christians who would argue about doing other new age practices and saying it's fine, such as yoga. Um, but manifestation, especially being a demonic doctrine, is not something that you want to bring into your Christian faith and use uh, as a, a separate alternative to what God has already given us, like seeking him, praying, trusting him. Uh, he is our great provider. He's the one that is in charge of our life if we are a Christian. Whereas manifestation puts us in charge of our life, trying to get and do what we really want. They don't work together. They actually completely contradict each other on every single fundamental belief. Manifestation says to set your mind within yourself so that you can come into manifesting your true desires. While the Bible says this in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 says this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Manifestation says that you don't need to wait on anything. You can bring whatever you want about into your life in the timing that you desire it. While Isaiah 60 and verse 22 says this, I am the Lord in its time, I will hasten it. Manifestation tells you to have tunnel vision and focus so heavily on your own desires. While Matthew 16, 24 says this, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Yeah, see, I think that's the crux of manifestation is it is so self-focused. It's about me. It's about what do I want and about getting it as quickly and as efficiently as I can. The Christian life is not about that. Christian life is a selfless life. It's one of love. It's one of servitude. It's one of serving others uh, to bless them. You know, the Bible also tells us to think of others more highly than our own selves. With manifestation, we're only thinking about ourselves and our wants, and it doesn't really matter what anybody else is doing. It's all about us. Manifestation says that when good things happen, you need to give yourself all the glory because you are the one that brought it into existence. But James chapter 1 and verse 17 says this, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. Manifestation tells you that you're going to be happy and satisfied with the material things of the world, and those are the things you should be seeking. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added to you. Manifestation. You got to love that. And that's one of my favorite verses is from Matthew of seek the his kingdom first. And then all the other stuff that you want and you need, it'll be added to you. But God is the focus, not ourselves, not our wants, not our selfish desires. Station says that you are in control of your future and you are in control of your own destiny. Proverbs 19 and verse 21 says, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Manifestation says that you can become your own God. Isn't that the first lie that was ever told that we could become like God, knowing all things? Exodus 20 and verse 3 says, In the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. 
there you go. I mean, she hits it right, the nail right on the head. You ultimately are making yourself God and putting God secondary to, to yourself. We take God off his throne and we put ourselves there because we want to be powerful. We want to be the ones in control. And a Christian life is not one that we have the full control. And that's actually a good thing because God is a good father and he's a good good uh, God. And he wants to lead us and bring us into blessing and to health and to the promises and the destiny and purposes that he has for our lives. He created us with those purposes and to trust him and follow him. We're going to be in a much better place than trying to do it ourselves. Including yourself. If you think that as a Christian manifestation comes from anything other than the devil himself, from the pit of hell itself, you have been so openly deceived. Manifestation is nothing more than a tool used by the enemy to replace every single need that you have for God. If you can manifest, you don't need his will, you have yours. If you can manifest, you don't need his desires, you have yours. If you manifest, you don't need his timing, you have your own. If you manifest, you don't need his sovereignty, you have your own. If you manifest, you don't need him, you have you. It is a wicked and so widely accepted, deceptive doctrine of the devil. So friend, please hear me when I say that I get it. I used to be so deep in manifestation and law of attraction and it's attractive. It's a new age practice that is so attractive and so heavily chased after because we want what we want and we think that we need to get it when we want it. And that's just not how God works. I love how she points out that manifestation it's kind of like this perfect recipe of removing everything that God does for us, his will, his sovereignty, um, his position. And we put all that on ourselves. What a what an evil practice. It's very deceptive. As she says, it's very deceptive. People are doing this sincerely and wanting to better their lives, but they're looking to themselves and looking to the demonic to do that as opposed to looking to God. If that's how it was supposed to be in this relationship with the Lord, where would the fruit come from? How would you produce the fruit of patience in the waiting? How would you produce the fruit of self-control when surrendering your desires to his? How would you produce fruit? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, Seven, you will know my people by their fruit. So if you are looking at your life and you're seeing a lack of the evidence of the Holy Spirit, it is probably because you are not relying on him in areas where he desperately needs your reliance. And without that reliance, you will not produce the fruit. So in 2024, y'all, let's ditch the manifestation because it is truly weak. The power of Satan against the power of the Lord absolutely does not measure up. I'm telling you right now, if you want to have a prosperous future, if you want to have true joy, true peace, true love, true fulfillment and purpose, surrender to the one who made your life. It's all right to feel a little scared. I can understand that the letting go of control can feel scary and a little overwhelming, but please let's not forget the one that you are giving over control control of your life too is the one who made your very life. Okay. Let I love her tenacity. I love the way that she shares from the perspective of being in the occult and now being saved and coming out of it. And uh, if you want to learn more about manifesta manifestation, um, we did a podcast on that uh, earlier in the year, and you can find that at the Kingfisher podcast on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. And we go into depth a little bit more about what's entailed and the philosophy and ideas behind manifestation. But from a Christian perspective, I don't think you could sum it up any better than what she just did. So I just encourage you, if you're looking to better yourself, if you're looking to reach your goals. There's no better way than to trust God, to push into him, to align yourself with him, as opposed to trying to fulfill and satisfy yourself. My name's Eric. I'm part of Kingfisher Ministries. Thanks for watching. Check out our podcast. Uh, I've got some books as well you can check out, which will help you grow in your faith and in your walk. Hope you have a blessed day.